Hello. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, it's so heartwarming to see so many people show up for you, too, because I feel like you have kind of like a cult. I'm kind of obsessed with that. Mm. Like, really, like internationally, not just in Milan or London or whatever. I feel like you have this following that of people that kind of relate to you, and I'm obsessed with that. Yeah, so. I think I just, I promote like self-love and just like being yourself. So I feel like people who love themselves okay, also kind of like feel connected to that. So it's like, it's not, I'm not trying to be anyone's role model, but I feel like I want people to find who they truly are. And I feel like that's what my brand is about. Yeah, and we're happy to have you here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me too. I'm sure it's not your first time in Milan, but it's it's something that I think um, we've been looking at your brand for a while now, mm. and everybody has been following you and your journey. And I think it's like one of, you're one of the brands that are that stand out to everybody because you're going against the grain of the system um, in a way that is very artistic. Um, which I appreciate. And so you were born and raised in London, no? No, no. Lagos. Lagos. Yeah. Yeah. And you were raised in... I lived there until I was like 12. Okay. And then I went to boarding school in England, which wasn't even London. It was like in the countryside. Oh. So it was like middle of nowhere, just like cows and a lot of white people. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like the only black girl in my whole year. So it's like, it was... It was like a culture shock coming from Nigeria, where it's like I wake up and everyone is like me, yeah. to coming to a whole new like environment and everyone is so different. What so, was that like for you, especially like as I'm, a creative? I mean, at first it was like I was excited because I in Nigeria, like my my art teacher, he didn't really they didn't really care that much about how much it meant to us. Like, I feel like for people who are artists, like, creating is so important to you. It's like, you, you would rather die than not be able to create. And it's like, when we would get projects or whatever, I would do, I would go, like, over and beyond because I just truly enjoyed it. Mm. And they would just be like, why are you doing so much? <laughs> mm. And then I told my mom, and she was just like, yeah, we need to get you out of there because, <laughs> yeah. like, it's not a place to really foster, like, talent. They don't really um, respect creatives in that way. I feel like that was back then, that was like, I don't know, like 2005. I feel like now, because of like the success of different people, like like their minds have opened up, but yeah, I needed to leave. But yeah. like, when did you realize that like you wanted, or that you were a creative and not like a banker or something? I am never it? a banker. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like math though, like I used to do my math homework with my dad. Um, but I could, I always count on my fingers. I never really could do mental um, things. But um, I don't know. I my, both my parents were designers, mm -hmm. so they just always let me like do whatever I felt like I wanted to do. So they, I come to work with them. Like I'd make clothes for like my brat dolls. Like I would just express myself. And like whenever I had like a school project, and I'm like, oh, I want to make this. My mom would like get her tailors, and I'd work with them. And then I used to work, she had a children's store, because um, she started with children's clothing. So I would like work there like every summer since I was like seven. Wow. Okay. So it's just like I've always been around like creating and like entrepreneurship, so. You kind of grew up in it, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, the only time I like segued and thought, hmm, maybe I want to do something else was when I was watching like uh, Dr. 90210 on like mm -hmm. E Channel. And I was like, oh my god, I think I want to be a plastic surgeon. Scream. <laughs> For real. <Okay. laughs> <laughs> so I would buy like these like rubber frogs and I would like cut them up and like sew them back together. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> well. But then I was like, when it was time to choose like subjects, I was like, I don't really, I can't see myself just doing sciences only. Like I'm, in, I'm intrigued by it, but I don't want to dedicate my life to that. Same. You know? I think in another life, I'd also like be a surgeon. I'm kind of obsessed with like Grey's Anatomy. Right, so, I, I love that. Yeah. I feel like maybe <laughs> later in my life, I, I might be like, oh, I want to go to, I want to go to like medical school. 
that's not gonna happen, but maybe. I'm, I feel the same <laughs> maybe way. Maybe I could do like yeah. the AI kind of like experience of what my life would have been like if yeah. I was. And I think that would be an interesting transition from fashion yeah. to medicine. But I feel like fashion is great because I feel like everything you're into, you kind of infuse it in, you know, like if you want to do a surgical based like collection, that is the time where you can like go deeper into all that research about that topic you're obsessed yeah. with. You know? And it so, kind of is, they kind of intersect in some interesting way. In I a think. way, yeah, because yeah. it's about the body. Yeah. Like. And I wanted to find out, like growing up in near London and like being from Nigeria, like how did those like two completely different influences mm. um, like influence your vision on identity in fashion? Um, Especially knowing that your parents were designers. I mean, like when I came to London, like uh, at school, the girls just wanted to call me Lola, and because they couldn't say my name. And then my mom was like, "No,", <laughs> no. <laughs> she was like, "Make sure they say your name." So I was like, "Okay." And then just like as you're a kid, you don't really understand, like how much people try to like put you in a box that fits the idea of what they see. Um, do you know what I mean of mm -hmm. you? So. Once I realized those little, little things, like being able to know, like, okay, shit, like, I am Nigerian, like, I'm proud of that, like, it is who I am, like, my name, Olala, it's Yoruba, and it means, like, um, I'm in the grace of God. Right. So it's almost like a manifestation, beautiful. you know, it's beautiful. So that just helped me feel comfortable in making the choices I wanted to make and just following my gut, like, throughout my yeah. journey. And just, like, also, in, in terms of like the creativity part of it, like the European influence, or I guess the British influence and the Nigerian influence, I can imagine like growing up and seeing your mother making garments, like what was that like and what type of garments was it? Was it more? What, what? She, her brand was crazy because it was children's clothes and I think because she had us, we were kids, like she was inspired by us. So she would do these like kind of kid fashion shows and we would do, we would like make dances and do like a whole performance, like at the age of like nine, 10. Mm. So just like entertainment with creation was just always something like I was, you know. Exposed to. Yeah. Okay. okay. But it's, I, I think it's like also super interesting because when you look at your collections as well, I feel like it has like European influence, but like, some I haven't been to Nigeria yet, but it also gives me like a bit of Nigeria as well. I feel like it's really global because like my mom, she used to go to uh, Petit um, Bimbo to like get clothes to sell in her store. So we would go with her. So it's like I've been exposed to like things in Nigeria, things I've seen on like television, whenever we traveled, like um, coming to Italy. So I feel like I'm literally like a child of like the world. I feel like our generation of like, I was born in 94. So it just feels like with the internet, with TV, with MTV, I just feel like I'm like cultured with like a lot of things. And like even with like Tokyo, I never been there, but I just felt like, I don't know, you know when you feel like you're on the same like wavelength, wavelength with something, but you, you, you've never even like touched there. there. Yeah. And it's like, I got to go for the first time um, last year and I, I literally cried when I first got there because I was like I can't believe I'm even fucking here like it was that. it was incredible but um yeah I don't know I feel like the more I grow the more I travel the different people I meet I feel really inspired by everyone I love that and I, I know you 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 went to like one of the most prestigious art schools in London um Central St. Martin's which I love but I wanted. To, I know you did your, your you did your bachelor's and then you started your MA mm -hmm. and then you decided to leave. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, when I was in my um, boarding school and I wanted to apply there, like all my teachers were like, "Why do you want to go there? Like, they're not gonna give you enough like personal time." And I was like, "Well, it's the best, so like I want to go to the best school. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not really." I don't know, I feel like a lot of people's fears is not something I really register. I look at things more like, this This person came out of there, so like, I want to know what about that experience, like, got them to that point. Mm -hmm. And going to CSM was insane because they were right, you didn't get that much personal time, which I think was really good because it was up to you what you made that degree, you know, like, 
everyone just had to figure out exactly who they were and how they wanted to create. And like I remember my first year, I, we were watching like the final years do their um, collection. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, I was like, how the fuck am I ever going to do like a collection? Like it seemed like the hardest thing ever. And then when I got to final year, it just felt like I, like I had gone through all the things of like growing and finding myself and knowing what I liked. That when it got there, it was, it just felt really easy. It oh. just felt really like, I don't know, like, not just, true. Yeah, yeah, like I didn't, all those fears that I had before completely just disappeared. And, and then since fun. then, I feel like every collection I've done, I'm just like, I do it, I love it, and I'm like, okay, the next one, how can I make this even more exciting or like for me? So for you, like schooling or college was like an important part of your life? I feel like it was, because like even, even some of the friends I met, like, I, I didn't have that many friends in CSM. I only had like maybe like seven. But one of them, like we used to spend late nights in the library together. And like I met him at an internship at Yang Lee. So we were in the same year, but we never like spoke. It was weird. Like we had women's wear, men's wear, print, and everyone kind of was like you separate. You did women's wear? I did print. Print, okay. Which meant like I got to do textiles and I also got to do like both men's wear and women's wear. So this um, one of my friends, Alex, I met him when I was interning at Yang Lee. And so when I went back to school, like we were in final year together. So he was just like, I don't know, you know, you know, you need, I feel like when you're creating, you need someone that you kind of respect so you can like get out your ideas. And it's like, they kind of bounce back with you for you to like elevate it to a point. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was telling him, oh, I want to do tie dye with leather. And I was like, but like, if you tie dye leather, like, it's gonna be, I don't know, like, I didn't have the proper to do yeah. so. Yeah, and yeah. it's like leather, if you if you wash it or whatever, it can get hard, it can destroy the leather. And then he was like, why don't you just spray it? And I was like, you're right. Like, I, I didn't so even, yeah, I didn't yeah. even think about it. So I just like tying up the leathers and then I would spray them and then it like created this beautiful like texture. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I didn't feel if I didn't feel open enough to even just discuss my ideas, because it wasn't from a tutor that told me, it was my friend, yeah. you know? It's like, I feel like the people around you can help you so much in like, especially when you're going through like mental troubles of like how you want to achieve this thing you want to achieve. It's kind of like a, a, a hub for like ideas and exchange and stuff. Community and, uh, yeah. again. And that's important. But we did it for each other, which was nice. Because it's like he did women's wear, I did print. So it's like, it's nice being in a world that you're not really in and like being able to communicate that way. Yeah. But the masters, I, once I finished my BA, I was like, okay, I don't think I'm ready to do, to start my brand yet. I still want time to figure out some things. So I did the masters and once I started it, I don't know, I never felt so uncreative in my life. It was crazy. Like, Mm. I felt like none of my tutors really understood me and like I would tell them ideas I had and they'd just be like, well, we don't, like, no one's really going to care about that. Yikes. And I feel like if I had listened to them and like I stayed in there, I, I, I wouldn't probably be where I'm at tonight or today. Mm -hmm. But I'm a really stubborn person. Like if something doesn't feel right internally, like I, I don't care what it is. What it's, if it seems bad, like me dropping out of a master's, it felt like the most freeing thing I could do for myself. Because when I left, I just like, I didn't even do any fashion stuff. I started printing my tees, but then I just started having fun. Like I was meeting people in London. I was going out. There was like a party called PDA. And it's like a lot of people that I did my first collection with, like the person who did the hair and the styling and the uh, makeup. And the casting, I all kind of met them in this like party community. Mm -hmm. So it was like a whole different journey from what it would have been like if I had finished the masters, you know. Yeah. And when was that? This was um, twenty. I dropped out twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. I had like gap year twenty eighteen, and then throughout towards the end of the year, I started figuring out okay. I kind of know what I would do for like a collection now. So I applied for Fashion East and I called it um, Exposed because all the people I met then, I was really shy when I was a kid, but like all the people I met then in my life, it's like I got 
kind of love that made me feel like I could be myself all the time. Like I didn't have to shrink myself in any situation for anything. Mm -hmm. I could always just be me. So that was just like the catalyst of like going. And does that, is like this um, concept of like being yourself and freedom of expression, is that something that you felt like fashion brought you or gave you instantly in some way? No, I think, I think that's just how I am, like internally. And you found Like it. when you ask me, what's your star sign? I'm an Aries. Like, I do feel like I'm tormented by like having, like it's just, I feel like I have a lot of fire or like passion. Because even if I'm talking about something that has nothing to do with fashion, but like I'm passionate about it. I might shout, I might raise my voice, but it's just how. You are. Yeah, yeah, you I know, think like you must have like some Taurus in you too. Some, no, yeah. I don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have a little bit of Virgo and Libra. Okay. Um, but I feel like the Aries part of me is just like it's fire. It's just like I need. I don't know. I need You're, to. It's do, like obsessive, kind of in a good way. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 emotional as well. Like, and it's personal because. Everything I do, like my collections, they're all kind of based off like the time of my life. Like, it's like a diary for me. At first it was kind of like my own kind of therapy because it was difficult to talk about why I do what I want because I just did what I want. I didn't feel like I always had to explain, mm -hmm. you know? And what, what's, the, what's the process behind that in like, creating a collection because I'm not I, I, I don't just say like creating a collection but also like a show because I feel like your shows are shows mm -hmm. it's not just like a regular fashion show but I think you think about it in a 360 um, point of view and what where does that process start for you is it like something that you start um, thinking about like 12 months in advance six months in advance like what is the process I think it's just been gradual because it's been my whole life like since my graduate collection like I did the music I did the casting I did um, I saw out the stylist like I haven't left responsibility of my expression to someone else I find like the people I'm inspired by and I want to create with and then we do this together mm. but every collection kind of changes like I learn a lot from the previous ones so moving to the next one like I try not to like you know, do the same mistakes. But like, after everyone I've done, I've just kind of felt more and more confident. And I feel like this last one I had, like, I didn't even feel nervous at all. Like, it was crazy. Like, I felt like this was exactly what I was supposed to be doing. And do you have, I know, it, I, know I shouldn't ask this, but do you have a favorite one? Of your collections? They're all my favorites. <laughs> it's, like, it's like asking, do you have a favorite child? I know. Because, you know I mean? like, <laughs> like I said, like, they all, they're all an expression of like, a part of my life. Like, the, the second one I did after the exposed one, like, it was the first time I was in a relationship with a girl, and I never felt so, like, the way we were in love, I never felt, I, it made me feel kind of crazy, because I've never felt so, like, I don't know, like, I wasn't in control at all. Mm. Like, I was just like madly in love. And mm -hmm. I knew something wasn't good for me, but I was still just there. So the collection I did was like, um, what's it called? Coming for Blood. And it was just like the, the, the like brutalist and like pains and love of like being in a like toxic relationship. Mm. But for me, like anything I go through, like I'm not scared to go through the worst shit because it just, it gives me inspiration to put out into what I want to do. Oh. Like I feel like people keep talking about trends, but I don't, I'm not looking at trends. I don't care mm. about trends. Like I just want to, I want to create something that I haven't seen in the world. Which makes sense. And when, when you talk about like passion and also like creating a, a collection around love or pain, etc. I find that really interesting as well in your collections because I feel like fashion in terms of storytelling is received very differently than art mm -hmm. in general. <laughs> Even just like looking at your, um, like most of your collections, like they always have like some sort of message and they're always received mixed. Um, in a way that I don't think would be received in a mixed way if it was an, an artist, like a, a visual artist. And so I think fashion in itself has like some sort of limitations in that way. But like, 
how do you balance that? Like, do you actually care about how it's, like, received? I don't care, but it, it's kind of, like, it's interesting as to why, why fashion makes people so angry. Because, like, I don't get it. Like, I, I truly don't. Like, I feel like if, if it was coming, different forms of art get accepted way more than fashion. Yeah. You know, and it's, like, what I've seen about how other people look at me, it's, like, they expect me to be very political, very, like, I don't know, like, like, in the system, go by the grain, be this, like, perfect designer. But I, I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not, that's not my goal in life, to be liked. My goal in life is to create how I wish. But this last one, like, with my nigger shirt, like, we, we hear nigger every day in songs. Like, I watch films with nigger. Like, I, I say nigger to my friends. Like, mm -hmm. so it's not like I'm saying, oh, like, everyone say nigger with me. But it is a part of culture. It is something that is on this earth. Like, we can act like it doesn't exist, but it does. And it's like, if you're in a club and someone is playing a song and they say nigger, you're not going to walk out. No. But if I put it on a T, you're like, she hates black people, she's a coon. And it's like, how, why, what is the difference? Yeah. Like, if I choose to create via like, what you put on your body, what is the difference between song and rapping? Like, we're still inspired by our own life. It's just a different medium. That's interesting. And I also I think that's, as you mentioned before, like, people accept fashion as an art form way less than they do um, anything else. Because if that was like a painting, it would be fine. Yeah, I think, I think it's a bit more. I think the way they see fashion is a bit more strict. Mm -hmm. I think the way I see fashion is not so strict, which is why I like I choose how I want to do everything. Like I decided, oh, I don't want to do two shows a year. I just want to do one. You can put the ideals on you, but like you're in the place where you are because of your mind. So you can't let like people dictate how you move. Which is, I think, something um, that not a lot of designers or, or people understand in general. And I think there's a fine line between like balancing like creative expression mm -hmm. and I guess commercial viability. Like how do you, how do you balance that? Because obviously you're a brand and you have to sell, but at the same time you, ha you want to use fashion as an expression of art. How do you balance that? I feel like there's a lot of fear they put on designers of that, like, you're not gonna sell, or if you do this, you're not gonna get these models. And it's just like, if a model doesn't walk in my, want to walk in my show, like, wh why am I gonna waste my mental capacity thinking about that? It's like anyone who wants to walk in a model show wants to be there because they feel part of this world. And again, I feel like whenever I'm creating, it's for the people who are in this world. So I know it's like fashion is in this industry with like LVMH and, and Vogue and this, but like none of those people have really like inspired me or like supported me. Like the people that support me are the people that come to my parties, the people that come to my pop-ups, like my friends who I work with, Freddie, like prototypes that I met at Yeezy, like Laura has, has been so supportive to me. Like she'd be giving me, oh, like I have this production person you should use. Like I have this um, pattern that would look really good and so and so. So it's just like placing value on what's actually important. I feel like the people that ride for you is the where most. the real, yeah, that's yeah. where the real value is. Like no shade to Anna Winter, but like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, like we don't have any like. Yeah, but you know I also I mean? think when you kind of do your own thing, these people recognize you inevitably and want to be in the same room with you. Whatever. Regardless of the other way around. I don't know. I, I, I feel like, I don't know, even when I read reviews about like the people in the fashion world talking about my shows, they spend so much time talking about, oh, it was so far away and it started an hour late. And I'm just like, you go to Milan for Fashion Week, you go to New York for Fashion Week. Like, what is going 30 minutes outside the central of London such a big deal? Like if it's to experience something you've never seen before, like why is that? Why is that in your mind? Like why yeah. is that important to you? Yeah, and I think that's because a lot of people are still ingrained with the, I guess, the traditional way of thinking about a system. Yeah, it's giving like herd mentality. I really wish people would literally just like do their own thing in fashion. I feel like fashion is meant to be self-expression. Like we're not meant to be clones. Like yeah. we're all meant to bring something like fresh into this thing mm -hmm. so we can all get like inspired by each other. Yeah.
And I feel like also just you've been breaking against the grain in not just in your creations, but also like with your collaborations as well. Um, like you've worked with Yeezy, Kanye, JT, which I loved, and Beats. Um, like how has each one of these collaborations with, I guess, um, these creatives who are, I guess, big creatives, like how has that influenced you in any way or your vision? I mean, with JT, I love, I love female rap. I love black women in general. And um, I've always wanted to direct something, but like I, I've been like, I don't know if I'm ready yet or like I'm not a director. Like, but I, the way I do my fashion show, I'm directing. If I, if I do a video with someone, I'm direct, co-directing with them anyway. Mm. So I realize I'm like, shit, I just have to kind of like, step into this and be like, okay, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. And it was like on set, I just knew exactly how I wanted it to be. And I just like let it kind of flow naturally. And even when we were editing, I, I stayed up like 15 hours with my friend Moshpit who shot with me. And we were editing this video like the whole time, like to every single detail. And it's like, you see, and it's just like, oh wow, like this is, is it was fun to see because I felt like it was really fresh. Mm -hmm. I feel like I look at a lot of female rappers and I love them to death and I, I want to see, I want to see them elevate their self-expression, you know? Like I feel like back in the day, like when I was growing up, we had Aaliyah and we had like Lil' Kim and like the kind of relationship designers had with these female rappers created so much like amazing shit, you know? Yeah. So I feel like coming into this time again, there's a lot of female rappers that inspire me. Like my best friend is a female rapper, Data Black. So I just I just want I want to be able to collaborate with the people that inspire me a lot. And that campaign was really iconic. Thank you. The yeah. beats one? Yeah. They were like, imagine they were like, oh, can we get Bella did? And I was like, <laughs> I'm not really that excited. Like I love Bella, shout out to Bella, but I'm just not excited. Like it doesn't really make me shook to be like, mm -hmm. oh, you know. Yeah. And I felt like the vision I had for it is really about black women because like I've gone through my whole life seeing so many campaigns that are just like very white, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like nothing wrong with that. You create for the people like that you are. And it's like I'm black, so I want to see people like me for the other people who are like me. Yeah. You know, so they can get inspired and do more shit as well. And was like, yay, like, he's just been, he's taught me so much. I feel like our relationship is, like, so much deeper than just fashion, mm -hmm. you know? Like, when we started working together... How did that start? He just called me when I was in my MA. Like, he called me one day and, he, and we just spoke about, like, a lot of shit. And he was like, oh, he wants me to come out to Calabasas. And I went out there, but I was like, no, nah, I don't want to really, I don't want to work with you yet. I don't feel like I'm ready. Like, I feel like I still want to figure myself out. I feel like I didn't want to go somewhere and just get my whole DNA from a whole other person. Okay, yeah. Like, I needed to know, okay, who is Maolola? What does Maolola really want? Like, what does she want to see? What does she want to, like, smell like? What does she want people to feel? So that was more important to me than anything else. And he asked me again, I also didn't feel right, but then in um, lockdown, he asked me to make like a, a collection for his family, which was fun. The one that, was it like North's birthday? North's birthday, birthday yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that, like, I, I enjoyed that. And then after that, he was just like, oh, come, can we do the Gap together? And it was funny, because throughout the whole Gap situation, like, it just taught me how rigid corporations are with creation and like design. Like, they don't really respect the um, the journey it takes you to actually come up with good ideas. Like, they're just like, oh, we need this at this date, and we need this at this date. It's just like, maybe I don't have it at that date. Like, yeah. maybe I need more time to live and, like, get inspired and know, oh, I want this, or I want that. They kind so, of want machines instead yeah. of artists. Yeah. So that yeah. whole year, we, we literally spent getting to know each other. Like, I was his therapist most of the time. Like, he would just talk <laughs> to me about things he was going through and I would just be there for him and we would just talk about a lot of things culturally that we didn't really understand and we wouldn't even agree on stuff because like I remember I wanted to make like a thong for the Easy Gap and he was like he doesn't want to sexualize things too much mm -hmm. and I was like well like I remember when I got my first thong I think I was like 13 and it didn't I wasn't looking at it like oh now I'm sexy it was just like I remember my mom always had a thong so it's like 
Okay. I want to yeah, thong yeah, as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's like, like a thing of it's like... It's like the innocence of like a child like versus Growing how up. perverted some people in the world are. I feel like I don't want to create like thinking about those perverted people because regardless, they're going to be perverted. Yeah. Like I've been, I've been like in a full turtleneck dress on the train at 13 years old going to breakfast with my friend and like some guy opposite the train like looks at me and he's like, oh, I really want to fuck you right now. And he starts unbuttoning his shirt. And the train is full, mind you, but no one says anything. And I'm just there, like I've never been in the situation. Mm -hmm. Like I don't even know what to do, but I just feel so much anger, so much like fear because I'm like, if I do something, I don't know, he might like, does he have a weapon? Like, is yeah. he gonna do something? And it's like, I'm looking around expecting like, people to speak up up for me because like I'm literally like a young girl mm -hmm. and it's like no one does so it just it kind of made me understand what the world is like it's like you need to be your own like you know yeah like regardless of how sexuality yeah. is viewed by others Ex exactly sexuality like you need to just own it and for me like sex like sexuality it's like a confidence beyond just being horny like it's not about that I feel like it's a aura you have that can't really be shaken, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, it comes out the way you walk, the way you breathe, the way you like decide to do your hair. It just inspires you. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And I think you see that a lot throughout all of your collections throughout the, the last few years. There's a lot of um, sexual aura, but mm -hmm. not in a sexual way, you know what I mean? Like, it's not That's the thing. horny, yeah. but it's like hot. It's hot, you know? but yeah. it's not horny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I also find that really interesting, not just speaking about working with Ye, <coughs> but also with, with JT. And I feel like you um, work a lot with musicians and the music world. Mm -hmm. Like, what role, what big of a role does music? play in your creation? It's like everything, because uh, I feel like all the all the music videos I used to watch when I was younger, like, I would look at what everyone was wearing, like, it was just so inspiring, especially being in Nigeria. Yeah, you said MTV. Yeah, yeah, like, I remember the first time I saw 50 Cent in the club video, like, I was just shook. I was like, what is that tank top he has on? Like, it just, it just made me really excited, and, um, yeah, I, wait, I lost my train of thought even. Right no, you're talking <laughs> <laughs> But like, music, music, yeah. Yeah, music, music is everything. I feel like music, film, my life um, is what inspires my fashion. Yeah. And I thought, like, I came up in a generation where we thought, oh, okay, you pick this one thing and this is the thing you have to do. And then, so like, when I picked fashion, I was like, okay, I'm a... I'm a design. fashion designer, mm -hmm. but I, but like my music and film still inspires the fashion. And it's like I do work on like my soundtracks. I do work on like the films I make. However, I'm still like not fully taking that rein on to be like I'm gonna pursue this properly. Mm -hmm. But then I started seeing when Kanye was like started doing fashion. I was like, why the fuck are you doing that? Like you should you should just stick to music. You're good at music. And then when I just actually fell in love with his shit, I was like, wow, like, why, why would I ever limit myself to one thing? Like, why would I not let myself play and express in all the different avenues, like, I no. feel connected to? Like, because I feel like we leave it at a point where it's like, oh, it inspires me. It's like, you're not going deep enough. Mm -hmm. It's like, you want to go deep enough. It's like, you want to make your own films, make your own film. Like, Maybe you want to make a song, like make your own song. Or maybe you want to produce. Maybe you want to write a song for someone. Like, there's just so many different Why not dabble in it? avenues. Yeah, it's yeah. like my and I feel like I make I, I made fashion, like music, and I feel like musicians felt inspired by that because like they saw the energy of themselves in my clothes. Mm -hmm. So we connected a lot, and I felt like a lot of my friends like were musicians. So I'm just like, wait, like. Why am I always dating a musician? Why am I always dating, like being around people who do this? Because I want to do this. And it's like the first time I ever recorded like a song. Oh, you make music too. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. The first time I recorded a song, I, I literally cried because I was just like, wow, like I feel like I've broken this wall of expression that I didn't think I could do. So it just felt really emotional. I feel like doing that just made me feel like 
shit, I could do anything. anything. Yeah. Literally. And what does your what would you how would you describe your music? Like what does it sound like? I mean like the collection, last collection I did, I call it Dirty Pop, because that's what I want to name my album. I feel like it's it's like me. It's like everything I like all in one. It's like messy, it's like dirty, it's beautiful, and it's fun. And I love pop music. I feel like I grew up on pop music. And it's like looking at how pop music is right now, it's not as, it doesn't feel as original and inspiring as it did in the past. Mm. So I feel like I'm trying, and I feel like now it's like a lot of the alt girls are doing more like think. original things, but they're still pop. So I'm just like, I kind of want to bring that energy to like, like the alt energy. Yeah, the yeah. main stage. Like, look at Doja. Like her, her Coachella show was insane. I know. It like was. seeing someone literally just like and twigs and put on a yeah. show like that. It was so inspiring. Like, I loved it. And then Paris, who did the choreo, I also had to work on my last show with me. Oh wow. But because I've just been always really inspired by her, like her, even the Super Bowl performance she did for Rihanna. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I get drawn to people who are really like good at what they do in a way that speaks to me. I don't know. Someone so, else might not think it's good, but like I care I mean, about. I guess it just means that you aim for the best, which I think make is. Yeah, I'm trying to like. I'm really trying to see something I haven't seen before. I get that. And when should we expect this album to be released? I feel like next year. Okay. Yeah. Like my, my last show was kind of like, I mean, I've been like kind of doing baby tours. I've been performing, I performed in Montreal, oh. New York, LA, just this summer. And I feel like those are just kind of like practice for the show I just did, you know? Like just feeling what it's like to be on stage, to like perform, to engage with people, to enjoy the music like you actually make, you know. And do you see yourself ever like, I guess, making that transition into like full on musician at any time in I the am. future? Yeah? Like yeah. a full on. I literally have a, a Spotify account. Oh, you do? You could go listen to some okay. shit. Yeah. Okay. But would you leave fashion for music? I told you, I'm not dropping anything for something else. Oh. Okay. I would do everything I want, Okay. always. Because there's even a movie I want to make. So I feel like I'm just picking the moments that make sense for the things that are important to me. But I would never leave something because when I think about the movie I want to make, I'm thinking about the clothes that are in the movie. So it's all part of the same world. I'm thinking about the soundtrack in the movie. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking about the furniture in the movie. So it's still just all world a 360 vision. Yeah, like it's like world building. And I think that's something that you see also that film that you made in the church with like the two black women who were, that were getting married. I was kind of obsessed. Are you with mean, that. the music video, was the it? bad slot music video? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I thought that was like something that was different because you'd never seen that before. Like just like, and they were like well, the that's clothes me. were. Insane. Yeah. And I think we, you thought of, you think whatever you make in general, I think you think of it in a way that's like 360, um, in a way that doesn't exist and doesn't work for corporations, to not a lot of corporations today. Mm. Um, but even just going back to the conversation about like Gap, um, you speak, you've spoken a lot about um, like houses. I remember like you tweeted once that you wanted to do McQueen. I did. Um, Cause I love, I love Aguilar McQueen. Like he's been a huge inspiration to me. Even just the way he's like been himself and just gone against, you know, the grain of what they wanted and just how he literally was able to express his pain in the most Insane. beautiful way, yeah, yeah. you know? And even, did you watch the documentary? Like, yes. Cause it's like watching how he was with his team, it's like they're your family. Mm -hmm. Like Freddie, when I met Freddie at a house party and he was like, oh, he wants to design. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I would see him a lot and I was like, okay, well, come over and like, you know what I mean? Let's see what we could do together. And it's like a lot of people I work with were like, we've met in different spaces, but we kind of become like a family. Cause it's like, I support you with whatever you're doing. You support me with whatever I'm doing. And it's like, we all kind of want each other to like, come up yeah. yeah and like we just we want the best for each other it just feels it feels nice like it doesn't feel like oh if i'm shining you have to dim your light like i would never want that yeah. you know like 
I believe in my friends as much as I believe in myself. But would you ever see yourself, con like just thinking about how the system is now, mm -hmm. like it's not like how it was like, I guess 10, 15 years ago, when corporations like, for example, McQueen is now owned, it's not independent anymore, and so they want 17 collections per year, et cetera, et cetera. Would you ever see yourself at no, a... No. This, that's, but to be honest, if they were like, oh, 17 collections a year. I mean, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> what is the actual number, though? I think it's like five. I feel like if it's five, I would just employ, like, there's so many designers. I would employ more people, you know? Mm. Like, there's so many designers that actually want to work on stuff, so I feel like... I, w I would creative direct, but like I would employ people that I know understand the vision so we can get it done. So that way I'm not like pushing myself too hard. You okay. know, like we are all kind of balancing this weight together. Makes sense. But like now I don't, I don't really see myself as a queen, but one thing I always just found really weird is like there's never been like a black woman creative director. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's like the topic everyone just acts like, huh? Oh. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's just like, when, when Virgil came up, it's like, that was amazing. That was really great. But it's like, after that, they felt like, okay, we accomplished that. That's it. That's that. And yeah. it's like, no, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not. Yeah. And I, I mean, I definitely think that, unfortunately, like, black men, in, specifically in fashion, have a leg up in regards to mm. positions or et cetera, et cetera, because of how they're viewed by the culture or the outside culture. But that's why I really love Kanye because I feel like a lot of people I've met in the industry, they would always just be like, Moa, we love what you do, keep doing it. And I'll be like, yo, I need help. And they'd be like, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> and then Ye's the only person that's been like, okay, like, I'm gonna support you. Like, what do you need? Like, let's get you out of this fucked up distro deal. Like, let's get you this or that. Like, he's been fully supportive. And I feel like in terms of like our community, like um, why people do that with each other, they support each other, they put each other in the places. Like, mm -hmm. so it's like, we kind of have to also do that with ourselves. Like, like in my team, it's very multicultural. I have people from Korea, Nigeria, Spain, America, like it's everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's nice because it's just like a lot of different spices, and it makes yeah different influences. Yeah, it makes it it makes it fun. But I feel like there's so many female designers that I rate, like Martin Rose, um, Wills Bonner, and I'm like the kind of the level that they create at. It's like they should have already been had a house to be able to even go yeah like crazier. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like I'm like, why is everyone not like? You know, going up, avoiding it. Yeah, yeah, but like, I'm happy there are more black um, male creative directors, like Max, like, mm -hmm. and he's killing it at Ferragamo. It's is. like, that's that's the one. Imagine if you have a woman somewhere else, like, it would also be really exciting. Like, I don't know what the thing is that's like, not letting it cross through. You I think I mean? it's just. I think it really is just like, circles. Unfortunately, true. Um, and the fact you that, have to like play the game. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like a lot of black designers are a lot, unfortunately, but also fortunately, kind of keep to themselves because. Do they? I feel that way. I don't think so. No. No. I've been on streets. I've been partying. But I've not been... keep to themselves in that way. But keep to themselves in we create our own. No, I think it's a thing of you having to be really confident about your vision because. Mm -hmm people will try and divert your vision into something else. That's Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, again, when I said Beats telling me, oh, Bella should be in your campaign, and I'm like, no, it needs to be JT. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if I was a white designer and I was like, oh, I want JT, they'd be like, okay. Yeah. So it's just like... But I, but I, I don't know, even just like thinking about why we don't have um, any black women designers in I mean, that should be a question to the, the actual CEOs. corporations. Yeah, like, yeah. Even Vogue, like, why are you guys not asking those questions? Like, why are you guys, like, are literally, like, living in this time where this is happening? You're just like... That's it. Yeah. An another white man has been appointed. Yo! <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I'm not, it's not even like I'm racist. My grandma was white. Like, I have white friends. I love white people. I just, <laughs> I just believe, I believe in like the best should be doing the best. It shouldn't just be about yeah. your, your skin tone. Like, but that's also what they've been, a lot of people use as an excuse. Like, 
we shouldn't care about their color. And it's like, yeah, but like. <laughs> I feel like you guys, you guys, it's a shame because you guys would never know what I would have done. I'm a queen and it's a shame. I you. think you shouldn't cross that off. Yet. No, 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 no. I have, I have other ideas that I want to do, but I feel like for them, if you're looking at it like this is the best, no, it's not. You don't know. I feel like a person creating a brand out of nothing and like creating a whole like world is so much harder than working in a company that already has a DNA. That's true. Like, the amount of shit, like, I've had to go through, um, Laura, Callum have had to go through, like, to get to the point where it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy at all. And I feel like it, we make it look easy, but, like, it's it takes a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why wouldn't you want someone who has that kind of vision as a creative director? Yeah. But then I, I guess it's like, they don't want the people they can't really control that much. Yeah, which I think is something that I don't know if we'll ever see, to yeah, be honest, which is disappointing. I just feel like we're smart. Like I said to you oh, when you were like, oh, how are you going to do X amount of collections? I would employ more designers. Like, And that's changing. That's also change, creating a shift in the system, a change in the system. Yeah, also, but that's what, what's his name? Glenn Martin does because he's a diesel and like, he has Faustin Simons doing the the like textiles at Diesel. He has other designers also doing other things at Diesel. So he gets the best people on his team, so he doesn't have to feel so much pressure. Yeah, you know, which I think is it's smart. a testament, and also like uh, the best designers do that. Like yeah. look at when you think about um, Alessandro Michele Gucci and how much times like he committed, he, he collaborated with so Good many people. different artists yeah. and creatives. I think it's something. Um, that the system doesn't appreciate, yeah. weirdly. It's like being able to build my brand has taught me so much how to problem solve because like I deal with like a problem or a failure like every other day. And like instead of just being like, oh, it's over, I'm just like, okay, let's do it this way. Or, like I'm just like figuring out something really quick. So it's like even in those senses where they're like, oh, but we want to make money. It's like we can make money. Let's just do it in a different way than you're used to. Yeah. Like, let's do it in a way where it's like we bring in more people from different like worlds yeah. to this place. And I feel like that's something Virgil did really well. And I feel like that's what people really appreciated. But it's like, since he's been gone now, they, they feel like it kind of died with him, but it's still alive. I feel like I do that. Prototypes does that. Like, mm -hmm. Freddie does that. Like, everybody, like everybody yeah. that... I mean, they're not as recognized by the mainstream system, but I think that's, yeah. the, that's also the beauty of it also, just knowing that there exists an, a system that is so anti-system mm -hmm. um, that it works against the grain, and I think that might be the future of it. But it just makes me think, like, okay, imagine if Michael Jackson, the person that he was, didn't have, like, Quincy Jones helping him make his album, and then he didn't have the label to be able to push his album as it needed to be. Like, imagine if Michael Jackson was an underground artist. Like, doesn't that, isn't that stupid? Yeah. 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 So it's like, why is it with fashion we're able to accept as like a lot of greatness just staying down there? When it's like all these brands do these collections that the clothes are not even really anything. It's like, that's why people just want more and more because like they wear the clothes and it's out of season. And then like, what's the next trend? If you design from a place where it's like, this is a whole world. Like the way you would shop would be different. The way you yeah. would see clothes, appreciate clothes would be different. I feel like so many people are not into like archiving, like buying archive because back then I feel like they spent a lot of time making pieces that were timeless. Got you. You yeah. know? It wasn't and the pressure of like, we need a, I don't know, like 500 piece collection. Like why do you need that? No. You need to be able to read the culture and understand, okay, this kind of thing speaks to these people. This kind of thing speaks to that people. Like, mm -hmm. I want to be able to speak to all these different kind of people. Which I think is why, come back, coming back around to your, your cult, I think this is why so many different people of different grains identify with mm. you because they see, I think, your collections and your brand identity in general or your identity in general, it speaks to so many different people in different ways where it's not just, like, one thing. Yeah. Um, but it's different influences. And I also want to ask a question in regards to like your legacy. <laughs> um, when you think about that, your legacy in fashion, fifty years from now, what do you want that to be? Like, what do you want your impact? I don't to know. Be? I, I um, it was funny. Like three years ago, I was talking to my friend, and she was like, "Oh, I see you having a store." And where I was that day, I was like, "What? Like, I've never even thought about that." Mm. 
I don't know. I never think. I never think too far ahead because I like this. But now you had a pop up, right? Yeah, recently. but I like I like the spontaneity of things happening, like in the journey. You know, like now, I, like I've done pop ups, but like I've been thinking, oh shit, I kind of want to open a store in New York, and it makes sense for me because, like, my biggest consumers are American, and it's like, I want to do that. Like, I want to have my own store that's not just a store. I want it to be, like, a place where you can go and hear new music and, like, I do different things. So it's, like, maybe sometimes people are performing or it's, like, it's just a bar. Like, you come and chill and, like, create with people, yeah. you know? So it's, like, I'm trying to figure out how it is I want to grow in a way that makes me still enjoy my life. Makes sense. And not think about it too far ahead. Yeah, but I have I have things I want to do. Like, I, I have, like, the movie I want to make. I have, like, the album I want to do. But I'm like, it's going to fit in when it fits in. Yeah. And then once I do that, I don't know what is the result of what, like, I put out that brings in some new opportunities that is going to make me, you know? Yeah, I think, I guess it's all, it's like building blocks. Yes. Yeah, so and then like, when you look back on it, I guess you'll see the full picture. Exactly. But it's it's like a blank like, canvas. Like, I'm not thinking like, oh, I want a street named after me. I don't care. I'm just thinking about, I'm excited about the future of my life, of what I will get to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy I don't know all of it. Like, I'm happy it just comes in moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Okay. <laughs> Babe.